the day I went to the streets, it was the moment I felt freedom with my heart. یه چیز واقعا شگفت انگیزی بود. واقعا وقتی بهش فکر میکنم انگار یه امیدی کل وجودم رو میگیره. Women have been at the forefront of Iran's protests. Their anger sparked by the death in custody of Masa Ramini, arrested for not wearing her headscarf correctly. The regime has never faced this level of public outrage before. But there's been a brutal response. Thousands have been detained. Sara was one of them, but then managed to flee the country. She told us about the sexual violence she faced. I was tied to another girl, and they took us to my cell and acted like there was something wrong with the key to open the handcuffs. He put his mouth close to my neck and he tried to touch my breasts. I started screaming and he started to yell at us. What's wrong with you? If you want freedom, it's okay to touch you. He pushed me and I was on the ground and uh, he punched me in the face. She was detained for weeks, including long periods in solitary confinement. We're not revealing her real name or using her real voice to prevent her being identified, but she wanted to expose the abuse she and others faced. One of the girls was raped and she told us she was kept for one night in a regime safe house. She said that there were two men who raped her. She didn't go into details because whenever she started to talk about it, she couldn't even finish her sentence because she was crying the whole time. Her body was shaking. Lawyers and activists we spoke to said this sexual abuse of detainees is common. Bahar, also not her real name, is from the Baloch ethnic minority. She was detained while walking home one evening. Two people took me from the post, took me from the post, took me from the post, and put me in the machine. I was really scared and scared. At first, I was trying to hold my hand, for example, to put my hand on my hand. And I was scared of them, for example, I was scared of them, for example, I was scared of them, for example, I was scared of them. اینا خیلی بابتش چیز بودن عصبانی شدن دست و پای منو بستند با چسب به صندلی که اونجا بود و لباسای منو در آوردن و شروع کردن به تحقیر کردن بدنم که مثلا رنگ پوستم اینکه چرا شما بلوچا رنگ پوستتون چرا اینجوریه شما چقدر کثیفین بدنت چرا این مدلیه how difficult is it even now to cope psychologically with everything you've been through. اون فاصله ای که من بیدار میشم تا اونجایی که تصمیم بگیرم خودم رو نکشم و قرصم رو بخورم سخت در تایم که در روز میگذرم. خیلی کابوس میبینم حتی کابوس این که الان اومدن دوباره سراغم. Activists say Around 20,000 Iranians have been arrested since the protests began in September. As well as physical and sexual abuse, those detained face psychological torture. On her first night in custody, Sara's jailers told her she was going to be executed. In that moment, I really wanted to hear my mom's voice again. They took me to a car and because I thought these are the last moments I was begging for at least calling my mom. And they told us, don't worry, your family will have your body by the morning. I tried to look out. They had blindfolded me, but I tried to move it because I really wanted to know what the world outside looks like 
because it's the last moments of me being alive. And I saw it's it was dusty out there. And I was just worried if they kill me here and hide my body here, how can my mom find my body? Because it's out of the city and she can never meet me at my grave. And that was the moment they finally achieved breaking me. Because after that, I couldn't feel anything. Some part of me died on that night. On another occasion, she was forced to witness a young male protester being physically tortured. He had scars caused by shotgun pellets. And I clearly remember the man standing in front of him asking, do your scars hurt? And he said, no, sir. The man was laughing and said, okay, then I'm going to make it hurt. They did it first with an electric shocker and after that a button shocker then button and he was begging them stop or kill me what was it like to see that terrible because i couldn't help him it was like you want to scream but there is some huge hand in front of your mouth making you silent baha has been struggling to cope since she was released dumped on the side of a road her trauma exacerbated by strange injections she was given in detention اونجا که من بودم دو تا آمپول به من زدن که هنوزم که هنوزم مشخص نشده اون آمپولا چیه وقتی من اون آمپولا رو زدن یه حس کردم یه بوی خیلی بد تو کل بدنم داره میپیچه یه چیز خیلی بد بود مغزم عین ماهی شده بود که هی مسیر رو میره بعد یادش میره دوباره همون مسیر رو میره گیج و گنگ بودم اونجا انگار واقعا زمان واقعیت و یا توهم از دستم نمیتونستم بفهمم الان چه خبره hospitals in iran refused to perform tests identifying what the injections were but baha is now suffering from depression and believes they've affected her mental condition هر روز با این حس بیدار میشم که من اینجا چی کار میکنم من کیم و اصلا چرا دارم ادامه میدم نمیخواستم من واقعا نمیخواستم من اینجور بمیرم چون تمام تلاشم برای زندگی و هدفی که داشتم میمرد Both women were forced to flee Iran and are struggling with the trauma. But both still have hope and believe the protests have changed the country forever. I don't have a lot of life in my life. But I really want to know what happens and see what happens. What happens to me? At least I want to see the rest of the day. Maybe that day will be for me too. Maybe that day will be for me too. Everything that you've been through, how hard is it to put it behind you now? I can't put it behind me. It lives with me. I cared about a lot of stuff before this experience. I cared about love. I cared about social life. But now the only thing that matters is freedom. And if you've been affected by any of the issues raised in that report, there are a range of places to seek help on channel4.com support.